Hi, everyone. Welcome to Level Up, a show where we show you how to quickly and easily build cool solutions using Google Cloud Platform. This is the second part of a two-part episode. If you missed the first episode, use the link below, view that first, and then come back and join us. So, Anant, let's take off from where we left off before. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go back and actually deploy the Dataflow application. For that, I'm simply going to get opening a new tab. And then I'm going to go over to my processor application in my, in my GitHub. The processor application needs some sort of options to begin with. So the options here are the Redis host port number and the Redis host IP address. Also, the pub sub topic from which the data flow needs to actually read. And then it deploys this Java application. What I've done is I've created a simple to use shell script to deploy the data flow application by first compiling it and then calling the data flow API to actually put it onto data flow engine. To actually run the shell script, I need to look at the options which I need to provide. The first one is a project name. I need to provide a staging location. So cool. So first, let me create a cloud storage bucket, which is used as a staging location. The staging location is used by Dataflow to put temporary files or anything related to Dataflow, which it needs to actually persist. So the first thing I need to do is create the bucket. I'm going to use a command line to create the bucket. It's a simple gsutil command, which is gsutil mb, which creates the make bucket and provide the project ID, the location, and the name of the bucket. In this case, I'm choosing a bucket name, which is real-time GS back. And this is creating the bucket. Now that the bucket is ready, I'll copy this out and paste it into my shell script so that my shell script will use that values for staging location. So now that I have updated the staging location, I need to also look at the name of the project, which is real-time dashboard demo, which is correct, the region in which I need to deploy it, the name of the port, which is 6379, name of the Redis host. Now, name of the, uh, the Redis host is also available here in memory store UI. I'm going here, and I'm going to copy this whole thing out just to be sure that I'm not copying anything wrong. And I'm going to paste it. And this is the IP address. The other thing which I need to update is the name of the topic. And the name of the topic is here. So you see here, the name of the topic is actually a hierarchical file where, or hierarchical URI, which is the name of the project and then the name of the topic. In this case, we have created the name of the topic as web events, so that's correct. Now, let me get into my command line and go to that particular project directory. So I'm going to the project directory processor. And then I'm going to issue a shell script to pro compile the Dataflow application and then deploy it onto the Dataflow runner. So I say sh deploy Dataflow. To sure, I, let me first save this file. And I have updated everything. So deploying the Dataflow. So this is going to use Maven to actually compile. Maven is going to download all the dependencies which are described here in the pom.xml one by one. In this case, it has already staged it or found it in cache, and that's why it has started compiling the whole Dataflow application. Once the compilation is complete, it is going to deploy the application onto Dataflow Runner. Have I copied the whole thing right? Yep, there is a typo here. Let's do that again. Good that I've created a shell script so that I don't have to rewrite everything from scratch. And if this is your first time running the shell script, because this is calling Maven, if you've never run Dataflow before, it might take a little while for it to download all of the dependencies. So That's true. if you do see that, don't worry. So let's go to the Dataflow UI and see if this particular Dataflow job starts appearing there. Uh, not yet. Let's wait for a moment for it to actually come there. What is happening in the background is the Dataflow engine is looking at this application and trying to generate a sequence of events or sequence of processing events it needs to do before it puts all that metrics into my database. Now that the DAG has been uploaded, uh, we can go see it in the Dataflow UI. Cool. Now that that particular Dataflow job has showed up here, we can actually go in and see what the job is doing. 
don't get perplexed by such a big DAG. This is DAG called Directed Acyclic Graph. It is a sequence of events which the data flow runner will actually go through and process. So normally when I hear the word DAG, I think of things like Airflow or Composer, right, which actually yeah. uses that. When I, and I think of sort of a workflow. Is that what this is? No. So DAG is a common term which is used, of course, by the workflow management system where what's happening in a workflow is the DAG directs what is the control flow. So what are the things happening? An example here is actually a decision box. Let's say in your algorithm you have a decision, decision box based on a variable. If x is equal to 5, do this. If not, do that. That's a flow control or con change of decision or control flow. All of that is done by airflow or workflow management systems. But in scenarios when the actual thing flowing through this DAG is the data, that's called a data flow. And that's why we have named our product data flow. What's happening is it's actually passing all the processing or intermediate results of a processing stage onto the next stage. So it's not a control flow. It's not a, it's not a decision. It's actually all the data which is ingested in stage one, whatever processing done in stage one is passed on to the next stage as it is. And in this scenario, you can see I'm parsing the JSON because my event generator was generating a JSON message. But once I've passed that JSON, you can see that I'm fanning out to so many processes in parallel. All of them are getting the exact same messages from the parse message, and they're processing all of them separately and putting them into Redis as some sort of a metric. Great. I've seen this sort of setup with so many customers sort of fanning out to multiple syncs, putting it into the data lake, as well as doing real-time processing. Yeah. This is pretty cool. Now that we have the data actually flowing in, let's check if our event generator was actually generating events. So let's go back to PubSub and see the graph if it shows that my messages are getting generated. And we can go to the topic, and we can see, yeah, the log generator was doing its job, pushing all those messages onto PubSub topic. Now, going back to my data flow, once data flow stabilizes, at this point it's still running and it's trying to evaluate how many workers does it need, and you can see that the, it has identified that it needs one worker. It's actually now processing events or uh, messages which are coming through. And then once that has happened, we can actually make this auto-update to see if this gets real-time data. Don't worry if there are no data points for some minutes, because what we're doing is we're aggregating data over a period of one minute and then putting the data here. Right, so that had to do with your windowing. Yes, that had to do with my windowing, which I was putting onto my data flow job. And cool, the data has started coming in. We can see the graphs animating. And we see the first graph here is visits per minute. Don't get perplexed if it's moving too much because it's all real time. As and when events are coming in, the graphs will start updating. So let's look at a few graphs which are simple to loop, uh, which has visits per minute. This is unique number of sessions you have in progress on a website. This is unique users per minute. So this is capturing how many users are there on your website at any given point in time. Now, these are metrics which Redis can easily calculate because these are all related to cardinality measurement. There's a simple API in Redis to bring all of this data out. This is a graph which shows me how many experiments do I have running on my website at, in, at, a, at that point in time. And you can see that I have a very large number of experiments running. Now, the best part here, and at this point it's showing zeros, but because it's a dummy event generator, this is all random numbers, what this graph is supposed to show me is, I have four variants running on my website around coloring. I want to see whether color combination one, two, three, or the default color combination is giving me better results. This graph actually table shows me the overlap of number of users, which are in variant one versus default, and what is, so let's say this row will tell me the number of users who are both in variant one and variant two, variant one and variant three, and variant one and default. So these kind of uh, set operations are so easy to do in Redis that I can do it in a single API call. Let me actually show you that API call and how it looks like. So going back to my dashboard application, I will show you my time series controller. So this is my time series metrics generator. So the set operations, if you see here, is very simple. What I'm doing is I'm trying to find out how many variants there are live. This tells me all the keys, which are the variant IDs. And then I simply call Redis 
with another thing called Redis S card. S card stands for set cardinality. <clears throat> so it automatically gives me cardinality between two different sets of users. In this case, my set of users were actually users in a variant. And when I issue an S card on that, it's going to give me cardinality, which is the unique number of users which are in both of them. Uh, similarly, I have set intersect, which gives me the actual ID. So let's say I'm, I was dumping the unique user IDs into my Redis memory store. If I do S intersect, it will give me set intersect of two users and the actual user IDs, which are in all of them. So now, this is the end of it. We have a real-time dashboard, which gives me everything from start to finish, all built in cloud, without anything hanging on uh, anywhere else. Thank you so much, Anant. You've shown us how we can ingest events, do real-time data processing, put that into a Redis database, and do things inside of that that we couldn't do on a traditional database. Thank you so much for having me, Jay. It was a pleasure to show you the right way to do it. If you'd like some more information, please click on the links below in the description and hit the subscribe button so you can join us again next time here on Level Up.